What is going on guys and welcome back to another fishing adventure. So I'm out here on the boat. Boom, a new bass boat. And I went to Walmart and got a whole bunch of plastics and storage bins for the boat. The guy before me that owned this boat, I really liked his setup, it was pretty good. So uh, I went and got the same boxes and I'm gonna be copying his setup that he had. And then the more I fish this boat, the more it will change to my style and how I want to fish this boat. So today I'm just gonna get started putting stuff in the boat. Check out that catfish. I already got a few things in here, but I'll show y'all everything I put in. But yeah, I'm gonna start with some plastics, which is how he kept these boxes here. So I'm gonna take all my plastic out of this bag. This is like my, if I'm going on a trip or somewhere, this has every single type of plastic that I could possibly need or want to use in this bag. So that's what this bag is, but we're gonna go through this and separate all the crawls and all the worms into their own box. So let's go ahead and start there. We also got line. I need to make a box for a line. I do have an extra box here, so that would probably be for just line. Terminal tackle, that needs to go in the back. Too freaking heavy. And then we got a whole bunch of crankbaits. Gotta be honest, I got way too many worms. I don't know why, I just like worms. Got way too many colors, way too many styles. Is that even possible? We got all different kinds of brands here. I'm not brand specific on plastics. Got a bunch of grubs as well. We fish a lot of walleye and crappie at my local lake, so gotta have those. All right. Also with my plastics, I always double them up. So if you open up one of these packs of worms, two packs will fit in one bag. So kind of just how I save room. So we got two colors right here, but I mainly use the blue right here. That's my favorite color but always have to have natural colors too. And then for these bags, I don't have the plastics, I just do the same thing. I throw two packs in one bag, so you got double the worms in the same space pretty much. Same thing with the craws, pack back there and a pack here. Got some flukes here as well. Drop shot worms. Gotta have those. So I'm gonna throw all the Ned rigs. I'm gonna throw that in the worm box. And that will take up the last space in that box there. So, oh, there's some more Ned rigs, dang it. Oh well. I do have Cinco's, but I have them in one of these boxes, which is inside, but. All right, so there's a worm box. Now we need a crawl box. And again, it'll be crawls, flukes, creature baits, so not exactly just crawls. And then grubs. I went out and bought a hundred pack of these, of this color, just because at my local lake, this color is fire. And then of course I got another bag of just everything. Every different type of color you might possibly need. I just threw them all in this bag, just to save space. But that will go in the craw box. And again, perfectly full, good deal. Like I said, I have a whole lot more plastics inside, but I don't want to throw them all inside the boat because I don't want to weigh down the boat. Plastics are really heavy. The weight adds up pretty quick. That's not too bad though. That's good. This is perfect. We do plan to take the boat out today, so I was uh, wanting to get some gear in the boat before we do that. Hopefully the wind don't pick up. It's Kinda, it's windy, it's not too bad though, but it's always way windier down at the lake than here at the house. All right, so for this box, we're gonna do all the line. So we have a six pound and a 10 pound mono, and I need to go grab some more line real quick. So I am sponsored by Soft Steel. I have a bunch of mono and fluorocarbon right here. This is all gonna be staying on the boat. Got different sizes 
10 pounds, 12 pounds. We got some 20 pound if I ever need that. This is just a liter line, same with those. And then we also have some instinct for a carbon as well, which is the 200 yard. If I ever need to re-spool anything, but we've got six pound and eight pound in that. And of course I can always just use these as a liter as well. Just break off four or five foot or whatever I need. And I just put in a huge order of a bunch of braid and four carbon and mono of all different sizes of soft steel. So that will be coming in soon, hopefully, and I'll be able to keep that on the boat if I ever need it. So, but I just want to have some options here if I ever need it for on the boat. I may even put this inside this box here. We can also get rid of the packaging as well. So we'll make more room. All right, so we just got that all organized, looking a whole lot better. So now we can fit even more in there once the order comes in. Yeah, guys, if you need any line, softsteelusa.com is the place to get it. There's links in the description, go check them out. But there is that. And speaking of putting in a big order, so my favorite thing about this bass boat is I can finally have a boat where I can lay down my, all my rods on the side here. And instead of cutting my lure off and retying on a different one, I can have every setup ready to go laying right here. If I want to switch to a crankbait, boom, pick it up, switch it out. If I want to switch to a Texas rig worm, boom, pick it up, switch it out. That is one thing I could not do on my Procraft boat because it had that windshield and the front deck was just way too short. For this boat, I can have all my poles rigged out ready to go. And speaking of that, I also put in a huge order for some rod and reels. I think I got about 15 combos coming. I got a crankbait rod, a jerkbait rod, a underspin rod, a punching rig, a spinnerbait rod, like a rod to throw a Alabama rig, a big swimbait rod, Ned rig rod. So I now have a rod for every single type of fishing. And luckily this boat here, it can probably hold about 30 rods. So I can have every single rod combo or setup inside this boat. So that is awesome. We have this rod locker here. And then we also have this one here. So, I mean, we could probably hold 60 rods. I don't have 60 rods, but I'm stoked about that, guys. But that is going to be a super fun unboxing once that order gets in. So that is the big thing for me. Of course, having rod walker space and just having every rod set up I can. Also, all these lock as well, so I do have the keys for that. We can lock everything, keep it all safe. So, we got the plastic worms and the craws ready to be put in the boat and the line and like I said I'm going to be copying the guy how he did it alright so in this box here this is going to be where all this sits where this plastic boxes are going to sit is right there so as you can see this guy he put these little dividers up or pieces of clear angle and then this side here I'll find a different box to set in this area here, and then I can keep a box there as well. And then he also had all his big boxes down here. See, that holds the big box is pretty good. It's almost perfectly made for it. How does this fit? These small boxes. I'm gonna go grab all my tackle, but I need to figure out the terminal tackle. I mean, of course, I only have two options. There's a box here on the side, and then the same box here over on this side. So, and these are deep boxes. So that is the storage in the back. And you want all your heavy stuff in the back of the boat. This is my terminal box and it is freaking heavy. I probably don't need this much weight, but I got like every different size of tungsten weight. Got some worm weights as well. Whole bunch of four aught and three aught hooks. Bunch of Ned rigs, three way swivels, bunch of underspins, bunch of spoons in case I want to customize any lures and Make them sweet. A bunch of J-hooks for walleye fishing. You know, these fishing stuff. That is my terminal box. Again, way too freaking heavy. So this will have to go back here in the back. And of course, I'll figure this all out. I don't know, that's kind of weird. I would like to have a divider or something. But probably keep jackets back here. Some cold gear, rain gear in case the weather turns on me. How big is this? It's pretty big. Trash already. All right guys, it is time. We are taking the bass boat out for the very first time at my local lake. So 
let's go ahead and head down to the lake so while organizing all the tackle Devin just called me and said hey let's go fishing so uh I just shoved all my tackle in the boat not really organized and now we're heading down to the lake and while heading down to the lake I actually feel really nervous I mean I've dropped my last bass boat in the lake like probably 300 times but I don't know man just for some reason I still feel very nervous this is a new boat I don't know how it's gonna act in fact I've never even seen this boat go in reverse does this boat have reverse I don't know I wasn't there when the guy backed it off of his trailer so uh, I have no idea if this boat even goes in reverse so yeah I'm a little nervous just because this boat is all new to me but yeah let's drop her in the lake and see how she handles Yeah, I'll take them. You got back this thing in far with the truck. I was like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I never felt that lift up. I was like, fuck. I saw the front tire, so I was like, I'm just gonna back it off. This one is, it's, I think it's shorter. Oh, I can't remember. Sure. This is like 19.8. I think the other, or 18.9. Did I go too far in with the truck? I no, you had see. to. Oh, I was like, like that. That's what I'm saying. You had to. I was gonna say I couldn't see shit. Yeah, the boat never picked up. <laughs> I was like, fuck. So I had to stop you. I just used the motor to. But yeah, it was a good day. It was a successful day. Nothing bad happened to the boat and I took it out for the first time on my own and it all went good. So I'm happy. I feel way more comfortable now with the boat. No more having to worry about dropping it in or anything like that. Of course, that's just all in your head. Whenever you're dropping in the boat for the first time, it's like, it's pretty nerve wracking. It takes a few times to get used to it, but I haven't had my last bass boat in probably like five months. So I just had to do it all over again. Once I did it once, I was good with it, but no fish. So let's go ahead and head home and finish organizing all the tackle in this boat. So I'm just going through all this tackle and kind of organizing it, making it look a little better. I mean, look at this. In this one box, I had all these jerk baits, some spinner baits as well. So I'm just taking it all out, putting them in different boxes and just cleaning it all up. I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing this. I already did quite a bit and I was like, you know what? I should probably be filming this for the video. the wave this is pretty heavy this needs to go in the back how heavy is this that's heavy too we'll throw these plastics in the back of the boat I need to get a spinner bait box we need to find a spot for these now again I need to order something for this now that's all organized look at that beautiful all right, so here is all the tackle inside of this compartment. Up here, we got all the plastics. We got the punching rig, the crankbaits, the jerk baits, the frogs, all the lipless crankbaits and the Rapalas and stuff like that. All the spoons and then the crappie box. Then we got the big swim bait box. We got the glide and swim bait box as well, all hard plastics. Fish Lab is actually coming out with some awesome glide baits, so I cannot wait to get those. I ordered like, I think five or six of those. Cannot freaking wait. Then we got the, oh, I actually need to throw some of these in here. I got some, I think I might actually tie one on. We'll use that one. These can go back in. So this is a chatterbait box. I love chatterbaits. They're kind of the go-to. 
the fish in the pond. Boom, chatterbaits are fire. So chatterbait box. And then here we got the big crankbait box. I'm going to go ahead and put labels on these. I guess it already has a spot here for that. But put labels on top so I know what everything is. And then here is just a box of tools and stuff I may need on the boat. That may go in the back as well, but right now it fits perfectly inside this little space here. So I'll probably get another box just like this and use it for all the big glad baits coming in. I got a bunch of tackle coming in as well, guys. I put in a huge order. Right now I'm about to have to re-rig all these rods for cold water. Water temp is about 40. 547 so i need lures that will work in that colder water so i'm gonna go through these rods and re-rig them get what i need to throw on and then we'll be good to go fishing but once i get all my new rods in i will never have to re-rig again unless i just have to retire or something but back here in this hatch is all the heavier stuff you want to keep your heavier stuff in the back of the boat but this is box here is like probably 15 packs of Kitex, just every color, different sizes. And then here I got all my favorite colors of Cinco's in that box, that's pretty heavy. And then the terminal tackle. Maybe I could put like a wall up and have these three boxes standing up. That way we still have all this space for extra storage. And then this box over here I'm leaving empty for the passenger, which is usually just Devin or Cody. Cody needs to come fish with me more. Little turd. Tackle is all organized. Now I need to rig up these poles. So here is all the rods I want to set up today for this cold water fishing. We got a spinnerbait rod, a square bill crankbait, uh, Alabama rig, suspending jerkbait, lipless crankbaits, blade baits, Ned rig, and a football jig, and then just a normal little swim bait. Oh yeah, baby. You should already know the Alabama rig is going in the cold water tackle box. Look at this thing, dude, freaking insane. I've actually never thrown an Alabama rig before, so this is my first time and I cannot wait to try it. Freaking sweet, man. I'm casting that out first. Probably could have waited to tie this on, but I didn't. I do have a, uh, a sleeve I could put around this to protect everything else. I'm gonna go grab one. Look at that. These things were made for Alabama rigs. Perfect. So it is getting dark, but I got all the rods and rails all rigged up, ready to go. I still got the chatterbait, a swim jig, and a spinnerbait. Not on a pole because I don't have enough poles. Or not, I don't have the right kind of poles for that type of lure. So if I want to switch to those, I will have to take one of these off. So I'm not fully there just yet, but once my order comes in, I will be able to have every rod ready to go on the boat and it is going to be freaking awesome. Guys, with this new boat and with Okuma, Soft Steel, and Fish Lab Tackle, this is going to be an awesome year of fishing. But it is getting dark. Oh, by the way, guys, I also got my motor cover, by the way. Already got that on. I parked the boat under these trees last night just so it's in the camera view. And birds got to it. A few drops of bird pooper on the back deck. But uh, cleaned it off. I don't have the boat cover yet. So I actually had to run to Walmart and go get a little cheap thin cover just for the time being until my big cover comes in. My camera is losing autofocus because it's dark. That means I need to go inside. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Ah!